So today I thought I'd go outside the realm of Shaolin Kung Fu and we'd have a look at Praying Mantis Kung Fu with my buddy Will from Monkey Stills Beach. My name's Doug Swift and I love Brain Mantis Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at the school, I've been here for about six weeks now training and Will's turned up to film some videos so have a look on his channel. He's been going around all the area, filming some of the old masters, having a chat with them, finding a bit about their lives and I guess some of the history and what they've been up to. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'll put a link in the description to his channel so you can go and see that whole series of, of uh, all those videos he's, he's making. I don't actually know that much about Spray Mantis. I don't, like, you see it in all the films, you know, with the guys with their fingers, and you yeah. see the Shaolin forms, and yeah, it's usually yeah, yeah. some super skinny guy, like, jumping about. My exposure of Mantis is that all Mantis stars make all like Mantis stars. Pretty much. And, and I haven't yeah. actually seen that much Mantis, so yeah. my first question would be about the got like, the equivalent of Gonfa. So we spend a lot of time training like drills to get our body connected up. So get our legs working with our body, our arms. Like we call it six harmonies, but Tai Chi has the same principle as Bagua or whatever. So does Mantis have that stuff? We don't explicitly use the word six harmonies. Um, the particular style of Mantis, well there is a six harmonies Mantis, but for, for my style it's called Tai Chi Mantis, right? And a lot of people think it's Tai Chi mixed with Mantis, but it's not. It's it's using the principles of Tai Chi, which is basically yin and yang. So whenever your body's moving, your body's moving as a whole, right? So if I'm punching forward with one arm, the other arm is coming back. So I'm, you know, as one is yin and the other is yang. I mean, the punches are just a very simple version of it, but it's in pretty much every single movement we do, this, this change of yin and yang. Yeah, yeah. And that's connected to like the whole body movement as well. Okay. And, and and I guess then the, the purpose of that is to generate more power or yeah. more speed? Yeah. yeah, yeah, power really, power yeah. connection, roots. Okay, do you have like set drills that you will train? The stances, we have line drills. I think the stances are pretty much the same as just regular bongo, marble, shugo, whatever, so there's not really much to show, but I can show you some. Yeah, 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 show us a couple of line drills. And then maybe explain what you're doing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. So basically, Yupan Bu means J during step, right? So the idea is you imagine, like, there's a couple of different explanations, but you imagine there's like a ring around your knees. Another one is something about the waist, like the upper and lower body moving in different directions. So that's our main, our main basic, and all of our body mechanics pretty much uh, come from this technique. Okay. You sort of throw yourself into the movement and then stay. Like with your body weight. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The first bit is the twisting step, right? Yeah, yeah. Twisting, and then, so, when you're in this posture, the elbow remains bent, and you've got a feeling that the elbow and the wrist are sort of like pushing down as if you're like leaning, okay. as if you're on a, you know, like on a table, like you've got your arm on a table. Okay. So there should be, quite, it should be quite a heavy feeling. Okay. So it's like, it's this sort of feeling. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, a mantis, when a mantis is like catching something, it clamps onto it, right? So a mantis isn't this like shaky thing, it's like a heavy clamp. So you're clamping down, so you're clamping down here, right? Twisting the body. Yeah, yeah. Stepping up behind. And then when I come down here, I grab the neck. I can just grab your face as well. Yeah. And then I'm just that's throwing. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then when I'm in this position here, when you're practicing the basic, you have to do everything as exaggerated as possible, right? When you when you're fighting, you move a lot more naturally. But for training, because you're training your goal, you, you want to really exaggerate everything. I'm looking at my back heel over my shoulder. This elbow is tucked in. It's the body, um, the knees want to be together, and this foot should be straight across. Those are the basic requirements for this. Okay. 
You can do it like holding it, or you can do it moving. I prefer to do it moving because it kills my knees. <laughs> yeah. That concept of like leaning, like I know, like the Wing Chun guys always seem to have like forward pressure. Yeah. Is that a similar thing with Mantis? Yeah, you've always, got, you've always got you've always got this, this kind forward of forward leaning on. Yeah. Is it forward or back? A bit of both. Is it? I would say. Yeah. So, and how? And do you, how do you train that without having someone? You don't. It's different. Are you are you focusing on every part of that movement and going through it, or is it just the case of just drilling, drilling, drilling? No, 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 no. It's uh, really important that you're breaking down the moves and understanding the principles. It, it's not just like how the move superficially looks, but it's getting it's getting the correct alignments. It's following like the correct rules of. Um, the correct rules of the movement so we have like a lot of little poems in Chinese that tell you like you know how to hold your shoulders how to hold your elbows like uh, we say uh, so that's like your elbows don't leave your ribs and your hands don't leave like the center so I mean obviously sometimes they do but the general sort of rule for movement is that the elbows are remaining along these lines and the hands are remaining here. So, you know, when you're protecting yourself or when you're moving or whatever, you're keeping this like movement principle in mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, the same thing with like the shoulders, you know, how you're holding your waist, like your hips, you know, uh, your toes like gripping the ground and how, how you're pushing off. These, there's all like little poems that you know, are explaining this. You know, these concepts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then as you're drilling it, you've got you're concentrating on all those. Yeah, um, when when you're doing your stances, you're doing your basics, you're always keeping this in mind. And so then when you're doing your forms or application or whatever, the idea is that it becomes completely natural. It's just a part of your natural movement. Yeah. Um, we don't really practice forms as a whole. Like it's very rare that we start and we do the entire form. Like in one go, we'll break it down into either combinations of movements or just single movements that we just drill. So we're always doing a lot of drilling just to perfect, to perfect the movements. It's not that there's like fixed basics that you can only do these movements as basics. You can take any move from any form, from any part of the system and drill it as a basic. So on like day one, you could, you know, if the teacher feels like it, he could teach you like a move from say the last form, tour and you could just drill that up and down, up and down, up and down. You can take any movement and train it as a basic. Right. It's just that you're getting like the principles of, of the movement. Yeah. What do you think stands, I guess, your mantis and then mantis in general? I would say it's in the way we move our body. Okay. So, I mean, the most obvious time you can see that is when we're doing force. You can see that the way the body kind of rocks, these sort of large, um, like a rolling, yeah, a rolling sort of movements. I think that's probably the unique thing. And I have seen some other styles of mantis, not not styles of mantis, but some teachers of other styles of mantis start to imitate that somewhat. Mm. Um, but that's definitely a characteristic of not not just Taiji mantis as a whole, but of my particular lineage, which comes from Tui Shou Shan. That's uh, like a characteristic that, uh, that sets us apart. Yeah. I think as soon as you watch us move, you will know, oh, that's Tui Shou Shan's Taiji Mantis. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what about, like, mm, like, I assume Mantis in general kind of fits under a particular balance. There's more similarities amongst Mantis than there is other styles, or is that not the case? Meipa Mantis, Taiji Mantis, Taiji Meipa Mantis, but basically like the same thing, it's just different lineages, they, they chose different names. Yeah. And then Seven Star Mantis is like, I'd say the other main one. Um, Seven Star has a bit more of a long fist influence. So they tend to have longer movements, straighter movements, and slightly different um, ideas when it comes to fighting, when it comes to using it. Mm. But ultimately, I think the similarities are bigger than the differences. Okay. Isn't that the high demand is just slower? Just slower, <laughs> easier. Slower and easier. Yeah, yeah. Bring me the spear. Not, not as complicated. <laughs> <laughs> We've 
we've had one already, but you get quite a lot of people and you see a lot of people asking on forums and stuff. They want to come to the Shaolin Temple, they want to be a monk, do 20 hours training a day and, you know, they, yeah, they want to be a monk in three months and then you, you get all these kind of warped perceptions of what they're going to get when they come to China and train. Do you get the same for Mantis? Not in anywhere near the same scale as like here or at Wudang or whatever because we don't have like the institutions, I mean it's all, all small schools, you know, or like people like my teacher that don't have a school, we just train in his home, mm -hmm. and the ones that do have schools have maybe 20, 30 students, it's more like the sort of setup you get, you know, back home, there's, there's nothing like these sort of big living schools, temples, things like that, so, no, I haven't seen it so much, I've seen very, very weird people, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, to the scale that I've seen, even just in the week here, you know, I've seen some pretty crazy people here, yeah, yeah. particularly at the temple. Yeah. Not on the same scale at all. Yeah. What you said at the beginning, you get the movie influence. So you get people thinking, Mantis is all this, you know, this sort of thing, like dropping really low and shaking. You yeah. get people doing that, but the sad thing is a lot of traditional Mantis teachers in order to attract students, they've sort of uh, started like fulfilling the stereotype. Yeah. So you get a lot of Mantis people now that when they do their forms, they go into these ridiculously low stances because they think it looks good and they think it's what, it's what people expect of Mantis, but it's, old Mantis doesn't have any of those moves at all. And it's kind of ironic that they're sort of conforming to the misconceptions. So thanks very much to Will, super interesting. I knew nothing about Mantis really, so it's good to get a little insight. If you're interested in Will's channel, have a look at the description, I'll stick it down below. Remember to subscribe, click that notification bell so you get a new message when I put a new video up. Thanks very much, I'll see you soon. Cheers. And buy a t-shirt. So that's the end. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, see you later.